Uh, thanks, Jake. How's everybody doing today? Good? There's a lot of good information between these walls. Um, and there's a lot of great things. It's exciting to be around GraphQL. You know, the emerging technology, um, every year it grows, it gets better. Um, I'm here to share with you a little bit about Optimistic UI. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, it's baked in to React client. Um, so moving on. So the original problem we had, this is a basic PDF upload screen that I was tasked to build about a year ago. Um, I think everybody's built something like this at one point in time or another. You just kind of drag in a PDF and it drops and goes from there. So I was talking to a colleague and he says, hey, Apollo has this thing built in called Optimistic UI. Why don't you try to get that to work? I said, all right, now a year later, here I am talking to you guys about how to get it to work. So the normal workflow on a page like this, you drop a PDF on the thing and you get loading. I mean, I don't know about you guys, I really hate loading screens. Uh, it decreases usability, increases your bounce rate. It's really not a great user experience. So what can we do to improve our user experience? Optimistic UI. What is Optimistic UI? Optimistic UI is a UI that thinks its glass is half full. The idea is when you send off in an operation, the UI will update before the operation returns. It's basically trying to predict the future to produce an output on your UI. All right, now let's play a little game. I built an app in React Native. If you'd like to download it, take a snapshot of the screen and play along. Um, we call it Apollo GraphQL Bowl. It's a pretty basic app that didn't want to start. It's a pretty basic app for the most part. So what we do, we have to set our name, and then we're going to set a server delay. This delay is going to simulate a poor Wi-Fi network, dropped coverage, things like that. Things you generally run into the real world when we're not developing locally on our machines. All right, now it's time to play. Bo is going to be scoring a few touchdowns here. On the left, you see the UI score. The UI is in blue, and that's optimistically being updated. As the server returns its values, it's going to be updating on the right, and in the bottom you will see as they come back. So we're going to move around a little bit. We're going to be able to continue to play our game while we're waiting for the server to respond. You can imagine if we had to wait for them server responses, we'd still be on touchdown two, sitting around waiting, kind of hanging out. But in this case, we're almost done with our game. So how do we make this work? We have a couple of different options that we could use. We could store our object in local state, and we can update it when our server response comes back. But that eh, doesn't work the greatest. You would almost have to lift it up if you wanted to use it in multiple components. So you could move it into a context, which works. You could use Redux. Eh, it's not the greatest. It adds a lot of extra code that you don't want to mess with. Apollo Client makes this operation very easy. With a few lines of code, you can turn your frown upside down and improve user experience significantly. So let's take a look at our schema for our app. It's a very basic viewer query. We have a name, the server delay, a list of actions. This is going to be our main focus, our touchdowns, our extra points, field goals, things like that. I also added an optimistic field. That is, this is not added client, but more for me to discern between what's optimistic and what's not. Uh, looking at our mutation, this is the add game action mutation. So we're, when we kick a touchdown, we are going to send off our mutation. It's only going to have the value, the timestamp, and the type. We are not going to be returning an ID because that's server generated. So we won't know our ID when we send off our original mutation. It's important because Apollo Cache uses ID to determine what object is where. So let's talk about the optimistic UI workflow. We're going to send off a mutation to the server. Then the optimistic function is going to be called. Inside this optimistic function, we're going to predict what we want to see from our response, and we're going to return that object. That object is then pumped into the update function. And when the mutation responds, the update function is called again with the actual server response. Inside this update function, generally, you might manipulate the cache a little bit, change a query, things like that. It's important to note 
that the update function runs twice with both objects. So sometimes you end up with duplicates that you need to watch for. Now, Bo scores a touchdown, because let's be honest, Bo scored most of the touchdowns back then. But starting out, we have the input to our game action mutation. That is the variables that go into our mutation. Um, again, back to a basic type touchdown, the value is six points. That's pumped into our optimistic response. In there, we create an ID that we know will be unique to the rest of the cache. If you get multiple IDs, you're going to end up with some improper values for the most part. Um, we also have to set our type name to game action. Without that value, the cache is going to get confused and not know what to do. The response from this optimistic response function is then pumped into the update function, where the optimistic response decides what we're going to do with our local cache. The viewer query response is that list of actions we talked about earlier. That is going to be updated as we add a value to our database that would be returned in this list. So now we're, what we're going to do is we're going to read the cache and we're going to pull that viewer query. The first time we go through with our optimistic response, we don't really care about cleaning our array, but it's kind of done for redundancy. The second time when we come through with our server response, that array is going to have our optimistic object. So now we need to pull that out so we don't end up with duplicates in our cache. And then when we're all said and done, we write it back to our cache. Uh, this is the implementation using the old high, higher order component. Um, you import your GraphQL, you wrap your component, mutates imported. Now, to add the optimistic response, you add it to the config object that is passed in as a parameter on the mutate function. And then also the result is pumped in here as a prop as well with your loading state. Hooks, if you guys have not used them yet, I definitely recommend go home, put your jammies on, type npm install Apollo hooks. You're going to thank me in the morning. It's totally worth it. Um, and that is about all I have to say. If you'd like to download the app, go for it. Um, any questions, feel free to open an issue on one of my repos. Uh, send me an email, send me a tweet. Be happy to happy to respond.